All right, ladies and gents, welcome back to chemistry class today. All right, we've got some problems today on stoichiometry um, that are advanced stoic. Right? Um, so once again, I'm going to give you a problem as always. I'm going to stop the video, try your best. Here's what we've got going on today. How many H2O2, right, hydrogen peroxide, used for cuts, right, disinfecting cuts, um, usually found in a, an opaque brown uh, plastic bottle under your kitchen sink or your bathroom sink, right? So I want to know, in this problem, how many peroxide molecules, peroxide molecules, can be produced from 450 grams of O2? So 450 grams, right? So in other words, if we start off with this much reactant, how many molecules of our product are we going to get? And we're going to suppose that water is in excess. Excess. So we're not going to wor worry about the water. Worry about the water, okay? As always, pause the video, take a stab at it, and we'll, uh, we'll look at the solution. All right, so let's see how you did. First thing I want to do, like any stoic, is I want to balance this equation, right? So we're going to balance the equation. And if I balance this, I find that what, there's, there's two oxygens, there's three oxygens, there's, there's two waters, right? So if we look at this, if we play around with this, we're going to, we're going to put a two, uh, let's see, how do I do this now? Two here. Alright, that's gonna get me, let's see, two. And if I put a, a two here, right? So we got two times two is four hydrogens, two times one is two, plus two is four oxygens, and we get two times two is four. Alright, so we're balanced. Alright, now let's think about this for a second. Here's our given, right? Alright, so to kind of give you an outline of this, how you would approach this. I'm not even going to start punching numbers around. I'm going to get a game plan. I'm going to get a good game plan and I'm going to use it. So strategically I'm going to say, all right, we've got grams of O2. Okay, the first jump that I want to do is the only way that you can compare oxygen to peroxide, hydrogen peroxide, is mole to mole. So let's convert grams of O2 to moles of O2 using molar mass. That's the only way we can make that jump between gram and mole is the molar mass of O2. Right. Well, the only way that we can compare the moles of O2 to moles of H2O2, our product, is based on our molar ratios. In this case, 1 to 2. And then finally, to go from my... I'm going to curve this around so I can fit it on my whiteboard. Moles of peroxide to molecules, I'm going to have to get this moles of peroxide to molecules of H2O2. All right, so that's my game plan, okay? Grams of O2 to moles of O2, moles of O2 to moles of peroxide, right, using the balanced equation. And then finally, we're going to use, jump from moles of peroxide to molecules. So here's what I did. I, as always, I did this out previously, and I calculated. Right, we balanced the equation. That's what we get. All right, our first, our second step. We have 450 grams of O2. I divide that by the molar mass, right? This is the molar mass of O2. Oxygen is 16 grams per mole. There's two oxygen atoms, so I multiply 16 by 2. So this is our moles of O2. Right. Our next step, we're going to make the jump between oxygen and hydrogen peroxide. And the only way I can do that is from my balanced equation. So I got these 2 and 1 coefficients. I got this from the balanced equation. Balanced from, from balanced equation. All right. So we have this many moles of O2, 
for every one mole of oxygen that reacts, we get double the moles of peroxide. So I get 28.126 moles of H2O2. Okay. And finally, we can make the jump between moles of a compound and molecules by using Avogadro's number. Right? One mole of a substance has Avogadro's number of particles. So this is our the number that we're looking at. So, that's the solution. Right. As always, keep on plugging away. I'll try to put up some more of these problems on the web page for you to practice. But in other words, just keep on plugging away. Rewind the video. Replay it. And um, you start seeing the pattern. I will say this. Before you start any problem, always get an outline. Okay, always do that outline like I did. In the first slide, before you start, ask yourself, does my outline make sense? All right, until next time, good luck, and I'll see you in class.